Previously on Grid 2. It's WSR Tournament number three. Dubai is all about high speeds and rhythm. Pulling from one bend to the next is key. The cars ahead are filtered through. The race is underway. Get ready for the start. So we're starting out with a series of promo events before the tournament officially begins. Callahan's idea said it with an image thing. All I know is I plan to style all over the other drivers, so watch me do just that. Okay, I'm a little surprised that actually worked. Oh, it's looking good. Oh, crap. Okay, he totally barreled into me. That's how we're gonna play this, huh? I'm picking up what you're putting down here. Coming into the final stretch of lap one, what have we learned? It needs to be tighter, tight, tight, like a latex bodysuit. Huh, I really should have changed in my motor fest ensemble before this one. Oh, gonna be tricky, are you? Watch me do, watch me do. Okay, straight shot to a max overtake. Frick, how is that not tight enough? Come on, we still have over half a race to go. Where is that best line? You guys are so big and so fat. Might as well be a boat for how well you drive. Okay, back in the race. No excuses, no mistakes. There we go. Okay, can we max? Can we max? Saying, just thread the needle, thread the needle. Trying something different, let's see if this works. Oh, that was tasty. Combo breaker. Well, we're sitting pretty at over 25,000, so I can't really complain. And like I said, these guys are totally fighting dirty. I am honestly satisfied with that. A great opening to a WSR Championship Series, if I do say so myself. Great performance. You beat the objective. That should earn us some fans. And here we are at Yas Marina in the UAE capital. The run-up is forgiving. 
just don't cut the track. It might damage the car. Checkpoint event number two. How will our fortunes fare this time? Are all about generating some buzz. Keep your objective in mind when you're out there. So the UAE is fascinating to me. Yes, it's a country built entirely on oil money, but it does sport some of the most extravagant and ostentatious cities in the entire world. You're passing cars at a good rate. Keep it up. And Yas Marina, well, it's definitely a centerpiece of all that. Oh crap, mind the baller, it's kind of forgot about that. Anyway, even though motoring is moving into a new era with hybrids and electrification, the UAE is kind of sitting pretty on all the cash it's already made. Time to make your own luck. Hit it. Supposedly, the plan is to throw that money into sustainable cities, artificial islands, and other tourism projects. It's all quite impressive. And oh look, I'm suddenly posting big winnings. How about that? Whoa, thought you had me there now, didn't you? Crap, understeering again. You think I'd have learned by now? So there's something else I want to talk about regarding the UAE. Yes, it's considered a not-free country according to various human rights indexes, but the country is gradually shifting to become more tolerant as the years go by. While being gay is a crime, it's only prosecuted if someone files a formal complaint. And according to an investigation by the US State Department, nobody has ever been arrested or prosecuted. More than that, it is actually permitted to have gender reassignment surgery if you have an official diagnosis based on medically relevant criteria under the DSM-5. Yes, you still have to go through a government process, but the fact that it's more permissible than some places in the US is just mind-boggling. And that's all I have to say on the matter. Okay, I know I did screw up a few times at the end of that lap, but I'm still sitting in a comfortable position. Let's take this home. Come on. Just a few more and we're maxing. Are they really gonna do that to me? I had it! Okay, just like that, we're back on track. Give me that maximum! Oh, they're too far ahead. The clock is ticking. Come on. There we are. There we are. Watch those points rack up. Oh, seriously? You know, I'm all for being a good sport and whatnot, but this is seriously pissing me off. Jeez, that is one tough truck. Last leg of the last lap. Final stretch, give me everything you have. You know what? It's fine. I'm not mad. I'm not mad. A win is a win, and we're gonna win this. And we'll head off to the next phase of the championship as if nothing was ever wrong. What a drive. You gave the sponsors exactly what they asked for. Okutama, and it's a face-off. Okutama tracks run on an extreme gradient. Maintaining speed is the key to success. Ready to go. It's one on one, so it's going to get 
tactical. Caution, no penalties for contact. In face-off, last place is eliminated after every run. We must cross that finish line first, no matter what. Oh, that was too close. I have not done well here in the past, and it shows. Get your headlight on his fender. Then when he makes a mistake, leave him behind. Oh, too tight. Come on, find that line. Hitting another surprise pit? That's it, no more playing nice. Get the hell out of here, ain't nobody got time for you. Ah, uh, keep it steady. What the hell? That's not... There is no way in hell that I am going to lose another WSR to a cheating son of a bitch like you! You bastard! You set me up! I am going to catch you, and when I do, I am going to tear you apart limb from limb! I'll kill you, I'll kill you, I'll kill you, I'll kill you, I'll kill you! And in a final fleeting moment, all of my anger just melted away. I'll admit, there was only one way this was ever going to end. In spite of playing games for almost 25 years, which is almost my entire life, I really don't consider myself much of a gamer. I'm not one to compete in PvP, I don't speedrun anything, getting achievements is kind of hit or miss for me, and I usually just care about getting my money's worth, for lack of a better word. But as someone who also enjoys storytelling, a game like Grid 2 presented an interesting opportunity to completely subvert that. It allowed me to play a version of myself who, despite an initial facade of not caring one way or the other, becomes so competitive that it results in devastating consequences. And the irony is that there would never have been any payoff for doing so anyway. It goes back to episode 1, where I talk about how if, in a group of 100, a woman in fourth place is shown up by three men, but is resoundingly better than 46 other men, and that example doesn't include the other 3 to 4 billion men who aren't even taking part, and the total ridiculousness of competitiveness in general, when you open the playing field to more people, being quote-unquote the best becomes pretty relative. It's why in a game like Motorfest, Summit events reward the top 10,000 people with platinum and the top 20,000 with gold. It's because they assume that a quarter of a million people will compete each week, so top 10,000 is the top 4%, and top 20,000 is the top 8%. And really, if you're in the top 8% of anything, people will eventually take notice of you and you'll secure a following. And the following that you make for yourself is relative as well. Throughout the game, my fan count was rapidly increasing, and it topped out at around 2 million. But there's an achievement in the game for getting 23 million fans, because that's how many fans Taylor Swift had in 2013. And it's like, why do you really care? If I had a million followers IRL, would I care about 2 million, 5 million, 10 million? Probably not. I'd probably coast on that following, make a career out of it, get sponsors, write a book, and retire when the momentum died down. But this game's story makes it seem like there is going to be some big payoff if you ever become the greatest racer of all time. And I'm going to be real with you guys. I beat this game all the way back in July 2023. I'm going to share with you a clip from that final tournament. 
Harrison Carter tries to pull a Chick Hicks on me, but it ultimately backfires and ends his whole career. I ultimately win that tournament. There is a final cutscene where I'm crowned number one in the world, and then the credits roll. No epilogue, because the game expects you to just do the online after you've beaten single player, which in 2023 and 2024, those servers do not exist anymore. Really, the true antagonist of this game was always Patrick Callahan, because no matter what you do, he's got the media fixated on him up until that final season. And when you win, it's implied you made him a considerable sum of money. Probably billions, with a B. But what about you? You're probably a multi-millionaire, but Callahan is still the winner, because he didn't have to do a damn thing the entire time, and amassed more money than you by a factor of 10 or even 100. Again, everything is relative. I don't want to waste too much time on this, because I do want to close up shop. The bottom line is while Grid 2 is a fun and challenging game, the precedent that it sets is just so dated that it does dampen the experience. And as far as the real world is concerned, in the content space, it's pretty telling that some casual gamers earn more of a living playing games like Mario Maker or No Man's Sky or even Euro Truck Simulator of all things, where there's less of a competitive scene and more of a daily grind kind of meta. And they can even make more money than people who compete in tournaments and have to take the top three or they get nothing at all. It's a bit of a strange world, isn't it? Final thoughts are kind of unrelated to the game. When I saw in my schedule where I was going to slip these episodes in, I was kind of surprised that the finale was going to fall on June 13th, which is the anniversary of my spinal surgery. And that was ultimately when I realized I should end it with an ambiguous car crash. <laughs> and that's the storyteller in me in a nutshell. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you in the next series.